How's it going, guys? Uh, D here, FTL Nerd Talk, and I know I have some weird headphones on, but I'm talking with Daniel today. How's it going, Daniel? Hey, how's it going, D? Great I'm to be June. here. It is good to be. Happy Juneteenth, by the way. Happy Juneteenth, man. It's a great doing, day. Doing anything for it? Yeah, man. It's just relax. Yeah, relax. You know, I have, with my trademark and this Starboy mug <laughs> right <Nice>. here. <laughs> That's exactly what I we're going to be not, talking this about This is today. completely spontaneous. I did yeah. not plan this at all. Like this, <laughs> no, no, no. Just no, of course not. Just spontaneous. <laughs> Speaking <laughs> of Andy Starboy, like, where did you get the idea from? I read the, the two pages you have on Concrete.com, and uh, he has like a, a bit of a, a long shot and booster gold kind of feel to him. Like, where, where did the idea for that character come from? Well... For a little bit of context, so I'm, I'm from Cuba. I was okay. born and raised in Cuba, and I lived there until about two years ago when I came here to the United States. And I did the mandatory military service in Cuba when I was 18. Uh, I did 14 months of service there. And one night, uh, working as a, security, uh, as a security guard, I started to, to ponder with the idea of because I've always been a huge fan of the whole Roswell mythology and the whole uh, ufology thing. Right. And I was thinking, how could I possibly make uh, the classic green-eyed uh, little green man from Mars, how could I turn that into an attractive, cool superhero, right? Gotcha. So the whole story started to develop from there, you know, just... Uh, I'm going to start developing this story about an alien living in Roswell, New Mexico. And then, you know, I wanted to, I wanted to introduce a little bit of my culture, a little bit of Latino culture, a little bit of, of all of my idiosyncrasy. So I, I, and it suddenly hit me. I read in a story about a Mexican alien. Okay. So it's kind of like a pun, but at the same time, it has a lot of, a lot of cultural uh, cultural influences in it, and I tried to put as much of uh, of myself in the character. Does, does Andy and in this Andy world speak? and the That's way that? Own. Oh, Andy, is, Andy, is habla español. Andy habla cantidad español. Oh, okay, then. all right, <laughs> well, there you go. <laughs> he seems like a, he doesn't take crap right, from anybody. Yeah. That's the cool thing about him. Like from reading those two pages, those two pages, he doesn't like he doesn't take crap oh, from man. anybody. And he just does what he wants to do. Basically, that that's a very Latino thing. That's a is very it? Latino guy thing to do. Okay. Just <laughs> that don't machismo, take for anybody. Right? I, I just do whatever I want. And <laughs> machismo, compadre, machismo. Uh, right. You know? Yeah, you see, you, yeah, that's yeah. it. That's exactly it. Right. That's the kind of error. <laughs> that's the kind of error I see with Andy. Like, uh, he's a cool guy. I really want to know, like. How does he? Uh, how does he fit in with the rest of the concrete character, like with Odina, Acolyte, and you know, it's all like where? Where does Andy fit in that mode? The interesting part is that I'm writing Andy Starboy as its own thing, so it's a very unique story. It's more of a sci-fi story that it has a lot of superhero elements in it, but it's not necessarily a superhero story. Gotcha. It has more of science fiction kind of thematic in it so he does have these to have encounters with the other characters of concrete but it is mostly doing his own thing so that allows me to do a lot of things you know uh, uh, it allows me to create this whole world and this whole unique thing with the character gotcha. so I think I think he would beat everybody at concrete though especially oh, no. <laughs> especially at sober I, I think I think he's got chances. I think he's got the chance to beat everybody. Oh man, you got! I think you just started like a turf war with your guys, dude. Yeah. We have a huge turf war, man. Like <laughs> we had the biggest rivalry is Acolyte versus Absolver. Like that's the big rivalry. I, if you, you want to start some, if you want to start some shit, yeah. just just ask them that in a in, the, in an interview. Just ask them, hey, who wins in a fight, Acolyte or Absolver? <laughs> It'll go on for days, right? <laughs> It'll go on, like, dude. Palante. And that, Andy, Andy be, just sitting in the back okay. trolling has gone away for who wins, right? <laughs> nah, I get it. I get it. <laughs> yeah, man. Uh, how, long, uh, how long have you been writing the character, uh, Andy? Like, how long was he uh, bubbling in your head for you decided to put it down on paper and then create a comic book out of it? Let's see. I wrote the, 
like I was developing the story around 2018, but I never really did something with it until I came to the States and I started working at Concrete Comics as an editor and later on as an editor in chief. And I think I started, I wrote the script back in 2019, I think okay. about October 2019 or something like that. And yeah, we've been developing the comic ever since. And it's been quite a journey. It's this close to being finished. It's just amazing to see how how is the, the progress and the pages coming in and the colors and the lettering and everything. It looks it's lovely. beautiful. It looks really good. And it's like the, it's only two pages, but those two pages makes me want to read so much more about that character because like dude he's just he's just a cool guy like he just doesn't he doesn't give a give a crap about nothing he he wants <laughs> to shoot some stuff up he doesn't like playing by the rules uh the little droid that was flying around what's uh is it a person like uh who's talking to the droid or is it the droid actually has an ai inside of it so andy starboy a large part of the story is that andy starboy is a reality show celebrity and okay. he has a show in which he fights. He acts like a superhero on the that's, show. That's why I talked about power. Longshot, because Longshot did the same thing in the Mojo universe, right? Definitely, yeah. Uh, so he does He does a lot of that. And he has this show where he fights aliens and, and monsters and stuff like that. So that camera that you see on the on the one shot, that, that little sphere going on, it's a camera. And the one talking through that camera is his agent. His agent. Ah, right. So that's the one that you always see... Like you see that funny kind of body cop uh, mechanics when they talk and it, you, you see that funny dialogue, the, the back and forth in which I want to do this. No, but you got to do this because I'm your agent. <laughs> well, I'm the star, so I do whatever the hell I want. Pretty much, so, yeah. Yeah, so, you know, I like, I like to play with two, two characters that have, because when you have two dominant characters you always see that struggle for power right and it's always uh, hilarious to write it has great comedic potential it has a lot of emotional potential as well so i, I like to have a good time i like to make the reader have a good time uh when they look at the stories you know just keep their mind off the the worst problems for a second or that, that escape is yeah i get that completely we all need a little bit of escapism right now so no i i completely understand that part uh, I'm going to take a little break from talking about Andy and uh, ask you a question about what's going on in like nerdy news right now. Um, I just saw this article just popped up in my feed here about uh, Bill and Ted. Did you watch the, the old movies? Dude, I remember watching Bill and Ted when I was a little kid. And the one scene that stands out the most is somebody crushing death's balls. <laughs> right. Like that's for a six-year-old. <laughs> Watching that on the TV, it's a pretty impactful image. Yeah. <laughs> Even though it's supposed that, to be a comedy, like it kind of just sticks like, is he grabbing death balls right now? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's just insane, man. I mean, well, it's Keanu Reeves. you seen the new trailer? Yeah. Did, oh, my are God. You, are you excited to see it, or you don't like, think it won't be as good? I'm really excited. I mean, I'm excited for anything Keanu. He's internet Jesus. I mean, Period. That guy, Period. Anything Keanu does, I'm always attached Keanu. to it. Yeah. Dude, it's like Dwayne Johnson, you know, it's something that you just see that person is in that movie. I'm watching. Well, take my money, dude. Shut up and take, take my, my money. Mo exactly. <laughs> Shut up and take my money. Dude. There you go. <laughs> just like that, man. You know, he's a great actor and he's got great, great chemistry and, you know, and energy, especially. Yeah. Especially the fact that they're doing it with the original cast. Exactly. You know, that's, that's something that, that, that kind of magic from the original movies you can't replicate that kind of chemistry. No. So I mean, like, it's, it's a shame not to have George Carlin attached to it, but I'm pretty sure they're going to find a way to make sure Rufus still has, like, a couple couple of nods inside that film. So I'm, yeah. really, I'm really excited for this movie also. I'm right there with you. Uh, you talked about being an editor, and you talked about being a – I read that you're also a translator. Yes, um, how long have you been translating words from English to Spanish? Is it just English to Spanish, or – I can do both ways. I, okay. I know a little bit of Latin as well. And I, and I have been studying a little bit of Japanese and I can understand some Portuguese, but okay. uh, not to a level in which I can speak it. My, my most, uh, like my highest level in language is Spanish and English. Uh, my first book I translated when I was 15 uh, on the course of a summer. I remember I needed, I was doing two jobs that summer. I was working as a security guard uh which which book was this by the way 
It was Tunnel to Eternity by Leon S. Rhodes. It was a it was a fascinating book. It was a study, a scientific study on near death experiences. And you know how some people, when they're close to dying and they go into a coma and they had this vision of the tunnel, right? And the light being in the tunnel. Yeah, it was a scientific study of that in book form, and it was delightful to translate. Honestly, very hard, especially a for lot of people go old. through that. Yeah, but yeah, is it a fifteen-year-old? I was fifteen at the time. Oh my goodness! Yeah, I translated my first book uh, when I was fifteen and working as a security guard in Cuba. So watching Death grab, well, someone grab Death Ball at six, and then reading the story about Death and lighting in a tunnel at fifteen. My goodness, man! There's a cycle. There's, There's a something cycle. going on there. Yeah. <laughs> Bro, when I when I'm twenty six, I might as well. Uh, I don't know. I might play Death or something. Hey, I'm, you never know. There you go. There you never know. <laughs> I don't know, man. Uh, you written a couple couple of books too, right? Yeah. Um. You're gonna to have to excuse me on uh, on the pronunciation of these words. It's uh it's uh Gaia in Dajakwe Los Nios Vanya R L. Okay, close enough. Okay. Close enough, dude. Okay. Uh, so yeah, um my first published short story was on a magazine back in Cuba when I was thirteen. And I won a, a contest with a lot of professional writers and I got my first published work that time at age 13 which was my goodness mind-blowing to me really because i have been writing since i was nine and it really explains like why those two pages really caught me so much of annie of oh. annie Starboy. like it's just like honestly do like like the characters the dialogue everything like in that story was just like even just for two pages really good so like it shows like you had that experience for that amount of time it really does thank you i really really appreciate that mm -hmm. yeah I, I live for my art Honestly, I live for my for my art and can definitely tell. Yeah, thank you. So uh, you, you gotta you gotta. Oh no! Please go ahead. Uh, so when I was fourteen, I published my second story on an anthology, uh, which is in Amazon actually. But funny story, since it was published by the Cuban state, I don't really get any money for it. And so <laughs> it's kind of like like the story of Tetris, pretty much. Yeah. It's there. It's in my resume. It's cool, <laughs> but but I don't really get anything from it. I didn't get paid. I was like fourteen too, so I don't think I could get paid anymore. Oh man! So you had a couple of books after that, I'm sure, didn't you? Yeah, uh, th those were the. the oh, they they were all done around the same time. Okay. Yeah, at the okay. same time. So I, so I was publishing stories by age thirteen and fourteen. My goodness, dude! Well, you got like a leg up on um, like on a lot of different people out there. So yeah. Definitely awesome. Uh, when it comes to Andy Starboy, and I know that you said the first book is coming out. Do you have a date for when it's coming out? Uh, we're planning to release it later this year, around November, October. Oh, wow. Yeah. Oh, dude. It's coming, right around, man. right around election time. My goodness. Yeah, I know, right? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I know, it's creeping up. <laughs> I know. I, I had to say. An American it, right? election, a comic about a Mexican alien. It's going <laughs> yeah, to be hot. It's going to be It's going to be hot. <laughs> I think you guys got a, you got a lot of work cut out for you, but I believe in you. I believe in you. Yeah, um, thank you. What's your goal when it comes to Andy Starboy? Like, what's your, what's your end goal? I know like, you guys, you work concrete, and you guys have Aldina, and you guys have, like, uh, Acolyte. Uh, what's the end goal for Andy Starboy? Like, you got a couple volumes, got a couple crossovers, got new characters. My goal for Andy Starboy is to go as far as I can go with Andy Starboy. Ooh. Bold. As far as the sky's the limit, man. I think I believe I'm a big believer in hard work. I, I mean, I'm an I'm an immigrant. I came here to the United States at age 19 by myself. Uh, you know, scary. I managed to get to get a scholarship at a col at an American college, being a some Cuban guy straight out of military service with no future, basically, and I managed to get that because I work hard and I, I study hard and I, and every day I wake up and I think, what can I do today to get me closer to my dream of being big, of being amazing? Because that's my, that's my goal. I want to be as good as I can be. I want to be the best version of myself every single day. I want to be that. a better writer than yesterday. I want to be a better human being than yesterday. I want to be more loving and caring than yesterday. Because it's not just about uh, economical or artistic success. It's also about the, the, 
your soul is also about growing as a human being the process definitely yeah definitely so it's not it's not just so with andy starboy something very interesting about andy starboy is that andy starboy i write as almost uh, a fictional version of myself I was and if you, ask. If you, yes definitely uh, i mean it's a it's a story about um a, a latino alien and it's a very similar experience to what being an immigrant is especially coming from a Spanish-speaking country. and in, in what way? A lot of ways. I mean, uh, people, people look at you different. You know, I'm, I'm super light-skinned, but I right. still got enough. I'm a vanilla milkshake with just <laughs> enough cinnamon for the security guard at the mall to stare. <laughs> That's, and the second I open my mouth, I mean, I got an accent. It's obvious that I got an accent. I, I can hear it. Oh, yeah. So people, people hear that and, you know, they, they act a little different. You know what I mean? It's, 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 it's instantaneous the way that they, they kind of change the way they act around you. It's kind of like zero you know, to 100, so, right? Yeah. Do, do you I put mean, a lot of elements in, so you put a lot of elements into Andy, I'm assuming too, right? Absolutely. Andy is a fictional version of myself. But he's a lot of anger. Living in a sci-fi world. But he had like a lot more angst, a lot more anger, a lot more pent up aggression inside of him. Oh yeah, so, definitely. Yeah. I mean, I'm a marshmallow. I'm a teddy bear. But <laughs> Andy Starboy, it's a freaking, it's a freaking maniac. Yeah. I mean, he, he's he like he's like Deadpool esque. Yeah. Deadpool esque. I mean, my biggest imp- inspiration for the character is the Ramones. Like his, the Ramones, the band. Yeah. Oh, I know of him. And the his kid can't to my crazy. baby away. Oh, I know him. Yeah. Oh yeah. His catchphrase is, hey, ho, let's go. That's, that's ah, yeah. Nice. Nice. <laughs> that's, that's the way he starts to fight. You know you know how Avengers have Avengers Assemble. Right. And, uh, uh, Batman has I am the Knight. And this star boy is, hey, ho, let's go. And, you know, he jumps into battle. He clicks and just goes at it, right? It right on, dude. Battle. Right on. That's cool. That's cool. Yeah, man. It's that punk rock mentality that. It's a fro hawk. Uh, yeah. The mohawk. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. He's a punk alien. He's dude, a punk he's Mexican so, he's alien. So damn cool. He's, yeah. so, he's such he's such a cool dude. He really is. Yeah. Like I, I'm, November cannot come soon enough so I can read this comic book, dude. Oh, I'm, really, I'm, really know, man. I'm so excited. Can you can you talk about any of the other titles at Concrete? Like I know, like you know, you guys got Hush Hush to get the the new uh, Black Confederate story that's out yeah. right now. Like I, anything you can tell me about any of the stories that that that, that coincides with Andy? Like anything like anything in the future you can tell me about? Well. I can't talk about specific crossovers or exactly what's coming on. Oh, you're killing me. (laughs) But but I can assure you, season two is going to be amazing. Season two of Concrete Comics, everything that's coming is going to blow your mind. You guys got like everything, everything that you loved from the first books cranked up to 11. It's just uh, amazing. I think. I honestly see Concrete Comics as a cultural movement. I see it as a renaissance of my... I hate the word minority, so I'm not going to say that. Neither do uh, I, because it, it perpetuates the word... Uh, it, it makes me seem like, like, like I'm a minority when someone else is a majority, and I'm not a big fan of that, so no, I hear no, you. No, it's because they're not a majority. They're not a majority. Screw that. There's more of us than there are them, so yeah. Screw that. I um, completely understand. Yeah, so... Black and Latino creators. There you go. There you go. Doing it something fits. beautiful at a level that is beyond a whole lot of the stuff that is being produced, even by very professional mainstream publishers. I agree. No, this is just next level stuff. This is very professional because we take very seriously what we do. And it shows. It really is. I just, I just read Acolyte again for, the, for maybe the third time. And like, there's a lot of details that uh, Alonzo put inside of there. Just, it just, it just blows my mind, like how much detail he puts into these characters and the nuance that he throws inside there too. It's like, it's really fun to, oh, yeah. read these, to read these stories over and over again. And like, it's the same way with Andy Starbuck, like reading the stories, watching like, you know, his agent talk to him, watching him get sassy, if that's the word you want to use as sassy. But like, he just, it's just like, it's just so carefree, so much fun. Like, and just, it just yeah. a nice experience to get inside. It's like, I'm being like a DC or Marvel comic book. That's, that's how it feels for me. Exactly. Yeah. But you know, the, the fun part about it is that we are, I think we are ready to take more risks than what Marvel and DC would do. 
I because can see that. by being indie, you have the possibility of you're your own boss, and you can do whatever you want in your book. It shows in Andy Starboy, it shows in Acolyte. I mean, it shows in Solber in Odina, you know, and it shows in everything else that's gonna be coming. Right. Um, the Black Confederacy. I mean, can you imagine that book being published by anybody else? No, uh, no, not really. I know HBO tried to come out with a show that was similar to that, but it wasn't like prepared. It wasn't scoped on black folks. It was going to be scoped on like, on, like just the Confederacy winning and the idea of putting a vampire behind okay. it too. Just makes that so much cooler. And I know like this is, this is, that's separate from everything else you guys are in the concrete, but still yeah. it's pretty awesome. It's still pretty like, it's, like those are the risks you're talking about, I'm assuming. Definitely. Yeah. I mean, especially the fact that when you look at most narratives that represent people of color, those narratives are not being told by people of color. And they're negative stereotypes most of the time, or like they, they're tone deaf. So no, I, yeah. I get that too. Yeah. So it's the fact that, and I'm, I'm not against it. I think that's okay. I, I mean, if that's, what, if writer, that's what you like, yeah. yeah. It's not offensive. Absolutely. I believe that even Christopher Priest said this, you know, a writer writes anything, but I think that, if only other communities write about people of color, then you can lose the points of truth. Right. You can lose a lot of content. You can lose a lot of culture and you can lose a lot of points. And that's how you perpetuate a lot of uh, bad stereotypes. Bad I mean, stereotypes. When you look at Latinos in media, you see it's either a very hyper-sexualized woman. Right or a very fat, loud girl, That's a couple, yeah. a, a narco, yep. or a gangbanger. And it's, it's not that far off with like with the black community either. Yeah. It's like it's there also. No, exactly. I hear you. Exactly. Exactly. So we need to change that. We need to show the positivity of the culture. And to go we off what you were saying with Christopher Priest, like he started writing Deathstroke. But everyone wanted him to write another black character, but he said he wanted to write Deathstroke because you want me to write for a black character, but I'm telling you, I can I can write other stuff besides just for black people. And Deathstroke for a while was one of the best comic books at DC Comics. So no, I completely I completely agree with what you're saying. Like that's I see a lot of that a lot of that flavor, a lot of that style in you guys also at Concrete. You guys definitely push push that envelope of things like like I I wouldn't have saw that coming, but it fits and it works, and I'm glad he executed with it. That's I say that a lot to myself when I'm reading your comic books. Thank you very much. I really appreciate that. I think that we're pushing the the boundaries of what comic book creation is. I really believe that, and especially in the comic book and the superhero genre. That's that's and, the style you guys are focusing on, and that's what I appreciate the most. You guys aren't doing love stories. You guys aren't doing super mysteries or like uh, things like that. You guys are focusing on superhero story that has all those elements inside of it. Yes. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. Not many people are taking that risk nowadays. I mean, a lot of people... A lot of people are trying to create the next Marvel and DC, but the problem is that they're trying to do it by replicating the same things that Marvel and DC are doing. Right. And the thing is that when you replicate icons, cultural icons, I mean, nobody's going to write the next Spider-Man. No. I don't want to write the next Spider-Man. Side, I want to write Andy to do that. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. You, wanna, you know what I mean? I want to create unique stuff. And that's what everybody should aim for. Don't try to write your version of the Justice League. Write your own thing. Write your own characters, your own superheroes, your own. If you don't want to write about superheroes, I'm a big believer in, in diversifying genres and comic books. Um, if you want to write love stories, if you want to write anything, but do it yourself, you know, do, do it your, your own way. Yeah. thing. Because when you just copy what other people are doing, you're not really bringing anything new to the table. <laughs> you know, I think... Uh, I think it was <laughs> being, being with FTO, yeah. I understand that sentiment completely. Like, uh, I think I ruffle a lot of feathers out there from time to time being, being part of FTO. And I think you may see that too. And um, I won't say I, I take pride in that, but like, I, I appreciate myself for doing what it is that I'm doing because I'm just doing it the way that I want to do it in the way I think it's the best way for me to go about it. So I completely hear what you're saying. I really respect that, man. I really yeah. respect what you do. I appreciate uh, that. You do, you do not check too much of Marvel, though. I see you're a big DC fan. Uh, 
me and Marvel have a love hate relationship. If you go <laughs> to some of the older podcasts, uh, it wasn't until this is going to get political, but it wasn't until like Trump came mm-hmm. into the picture. Yeah, it, see the face he made, you get it completely. Uh, one of his buddies, one of his close buddies, is now the the CEO of Marvel Comic Books, and because of that reason, I decided to take a break until he's out of the administration. So. Mm-hmm. Like, until he's gone, I can't really do Marvel right now. But I wouldn't mind talking more about Marvel because I, I, growing up, I love both, even though I have, like, you know, Batman tattoos everywhere. Nice, man. But I got four Batman tattoos, four all together. <laughs> but uh, even though, like, even though that's the case, like, I still want to see more uh, Marvel stuff out there. I know Thor's good. I know Incredible Hulk is good. I know, like, they got a lot of good stuff, but uh, Captain Marvel's yeah. still going pretty good. Her books are strong. And Miss Marvel. Like, I know what's out there. I just haven't delve into it yet but yeah. when he's gone i'll be all over it again yeah <laughs> just just, just how you. it is man got priorities right so yeah i hear you they do have great um uh, black stories though they yes. do have some some pretty good black stories i think it was the the black captain america uh sam, sam wilson that was yes great. something like that that i read it a long time ago i got I a new too it's good. because it was beautiful it was oh you beautiful. mean the first captain america uh yeah. was it isaiah uh, Isaac, uh, Isaiah Bradley Washington, I think like it that. was. Yeah, and his grandson yep. is Patriot. Yes. Yeah. 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 Oh, I read it. Uh, all, all the other stuff, most definitely, I read it. Luke Cage, yeah. uh, a lot of the older Black Panther stuff. Like I was all over it, but uh, just I got just gotta take a break. Just gotta, take, just gotta take a break. <laughs> I got one more question for you, man. One more question before we go. Um, you said Starboy comes out in November. You guys got a lot of stuff coming up with season two. Of concrete, um, how is this going to look for you guys? Considering conventions are closed, considering all like the the big places are kind of shut down right now, you guys are doing mostly stuff like this. It's talking to people through Zoom and video chat, things like that. Like, uh, how are you guys going to keep on growing concrete? Considering like you know the big the big way to get these to be seen is kind of shut down right now. Like, how how are you guys fixing that problem? I think that our biggest strength, not only as a company, but as individual creators, is that we have a lot of audience interaction. And we always try to look at our fans and look at the people who read our stuff as family. And I think that love calls love. So when you love the people who reads you, when you show love for your craft and you show that you are a humble, good human being who's here to make good a uh, good product who's here to make great art, great stories to, I think that that calls more readers. You know, our presence in social media is very strong. Right. Uh, we are always active. We never stop working. Uh, we avoid negativity that we don't go into stupid dramas and stuff right. like that. We just focus on doing our thing and doing it right. And that shows. I think that shows not only in the quality of the books, but in our our interactions with fans and our interactions with people and other creators and stuff like that. We always stand, stay in our lane, doing our thing, doing it right, conducting ourselves as professionals. Because being indie is not an excuse to not being professional. Agreed. On the contrary, it should be the biggest reason why you should be a professional. Because you want to be well known. Exactly. Right. So I believe right, right. that the way that we conduct ourselves, both uh, on the internet and in real life, even if we're not going to constant stuff like that, we still have a very strong presence. We have a very loyal fan base, which we love. Your fan base loves the hell out of you guys. Oh, yeah. So, <laughs> yeah, they, they love you. And we love the hell out of them. I bet. I mean, they're beautiful people. <laughs> uh, where can we find you, Daniel? Where can we find you on the internet? You can find me, uh, Daniel D. Calvo, author, on Instagram and Facebook. Okay. That is Daniel D, the letter D. Calvo is C-A-L-V-O. Ca- Calvo. I'm struggling. Is it, is it Calvoy or Calvo? Calvo. Okay. Yes. It, it'll be in the description. I just wanted to hear you say it. That's all. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and Concrete Comics is Concrete. Uh, is it ConcreteComics.com or Concrete.com? Uh, concretecomics.com. Concretecomics.com. Concrete K. And yeah, keep it K. Keep it concrete. Don't forget keep about it that. Concrete. Keep it concrete. Hashtag. There, see, there it is. He got it. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta plug it out there. And you, you guys are also on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, right? Yes, sir. Perfect. 
All right, this has been D. Been chatting with Daniel this entire time. I hope you guys have fun. Go check them out. Uh, Andy Starbuck, Andy Starbuck comes out in uh, in November. It won't be a Kickstarter, right? Yes, sir. It will be we'll, a Kickstarter. Oh, it will be a Kickstarter. Oh, yeah. I didn't know that. So there you go. It will be a Kickstarter. So yeah, there you yeah. go. So make sure you support it when it comes out. So you can get yourself a copy. And I'm pretty sure you got some other cool stuff to give away too. So yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Just wait for it, man. It's going to blow your mind. <laughs> you guys have a good one. This is D. Take it easy, Daniel. All right. God bless.